haven't even got the page open. <laughs> I haven't even got the page open. Hello, sir. It's been so long. Oh. I know. There we go. Yay. Hey, I'm in the right place at last. Uh, hi. How you doing, Robert? <laughs> I I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Although I had a little disappointment with something I just received in the mail, but we'll get to that later. Well, I've got my little, I got my little AC. Oh, you do. I got my little AC blaring away. I, I it needs to be. I need to raise it up slightly because if I do that, it's perfect. So if you see me doing this during the stream, I'm just getting my 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 uh, face. Um, covered and then if i press the cool oh then it gets the, the like the mist you know it uses the water to oh that's the like, best mist yeah that's like that you europeans are really good at that you know getting that misty i love that oh, like, being, oh. you know like being in spain when you're outside yeah. in a hot day they have like mist coming down on you i mean man that was one of my favorite things about going to barcelona for the first time i'm like Man, you Europeans really understand how to be human beings. Culture, mate. It's I mean, a fucking culture. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's you know, it's it's a double-edged sword. Sometimes you know how to get rid of human beings very well, but you also <laughs> know how to live better. So it just depends. You know, it depends where you're at. Thousands Americans of years of trial and error. Yeah, Americans are young. We're we're a youthful nation. We haven't quite figured out how to be comfortable in our own skin yet. Maybe one day we will. But until Maybe. then. Yeah, maybe you know, I, I maybe you're like the errant children of the world. We are. When uh, you're playing yeah. up at the moment, uh, yeah, you know, you get sent to bed without any t-shirts. Certainly, you know. I'll tell you, unless we're playing, you know, uh, uh, countries in football. If our female <laughs> soccer sorry, football teams are playing, uh, it's too bad for the Americans. Sorry, sorry, ladies. Sticking my head in it. By the way, I got to answer this. Radio Man uh, 1017 sent you a super chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, it says, Hail As and Rob, thoughts on the three foot tall Galactus from HasLab. Despite bring, being Hasbro, I'm probably getting it. Let me ask you something. Fuck. If they're making a three foot Galactus, the answer should be like, I want that. And I must, po I must possess it. I think so. I want to be the herald of the HasLab Galactus. I want to fly in on my surfboard. With my cosmic powers, whether I come on, uh oh, what's going on? What, what's happening? Has some news broke that we don't know about? No, I'm, 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 I'm right. I'm annoyed with myself, and I'm, I'm also hard at the same time. Oh, that's good. That's because, a great way to be. Because <laughs> uh, I'm very pissed off with Hasbro at the moment after their their racist training. Uh, but this Galactus. I, I got to back it. Dude, come on, man. I, I mean, don't you want that? We got to show right, we got to show this off cuz yes, this you is do. This is insanity. Uh holy hecky hell's bells, bruh. Come on. Bruh. It's 3 feet tall. And it's, it's got multiple three face plates. Feet. I know. That's a one in. That's a what five and a five and three quarter. Yeah, is that like a black a black series figure? If it's if it's black, it'd be three inches, wouldn't it? No, that's six inches. Oh, actually, oh. if it was black, it'd be eight to ten inches. Ha ha. <laughs> I can say your huge diet. Um, that is crazy. I saw a like a. Maybe we need to go up. Yeah, here we go. Oh, there you go. It looks pretty articulated for being that big. Yeah, too. that's a six inch, six, 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 six inch figure. Yeah, dude, check that out. That's a twelve scale figure next to that Galactus. Twelve scale. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> Neighbor of the Beast. Uh, so, uh, Hot Toys are going to come about up to there. Up to his skirt. Yeah. Looks pretty damn good. There. Skeleton face. Yeah. 
these these should light up. Uh, they the, probably uh, do. And look at the different face plates. You got grinning. You got smiling. I know. You got skeleton. Mm. At least it's not a cloud. No, it's thank God. I've always loved Galactus. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is really annoying though, because Hasbro, of course, had done their uh, disgusting racist training that came out. And, you know, I just want kids to play with toys. I don't want kids to be lectured to or preached to about your own personal politics. I think that's disgusting, regardless of what they even are. Look at this. Come on, dude. I, I Kirby design looks so awesome in 3D. Too bad they never used it in the film. Yeah. They made him a stupid cloud. There, there's Galactics from the movie. Look at that. <laughs> It's it's uh it's pretty beautiful. I want it. I'm wondering if I play this, will they claim the stream? Should we risk it for a biscuit? <laughs> Let's have a look. I'll take the music off. Thirty two inches. Ladies, <laughs> what's he packing under that skirt? I um, know. I dread to think more he than hungers. I could handle. That's he hungers. Yeah, he, <laughs> he you can handle it. Come on now, three three hundred pieces. Wow, seventy points of articulation. Did, you didn't get the Unicron, did you? No, I wanted to, but, but we couldn't get it in the UK at the time. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I want to get going on the UK store, so I can get this from. Mm. The UK I want to get now. Jabba's sail barge, which I never got, uh, but it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, it was. Um, it's the biggie that one as well. Great yeah. for your black series. T man, yeah, four times uh, AAA batteries required. Not included. 400 quid and you can't put some ruddy batteries in. <laughs> Jeez, man. Three swappable face plates. Grrr. Yeah. Zombie Galactus. Back. Yeah, there you go. Uh, how many people? Let's see. Uh, I think one... 14,000 or something. 14,000 they want. They've already got 8,300. Yeah, that's what so I was wondering. 40 days left. Well, that's good. Because uh, I'm, I'm really annoyed that I missed out on the... Um, on the uh, What's the Jiggy robot... <laughs> Um, the Sentinel. Sentinels, yeah. Yeah. Because they would have still been great with the one in sixes, man. I know. Oh, I know. It's way more expensive for us in the UK. It's $400, but it's £400. Yeah. So yeah. we just get another 25%. That, And the reason why they do that, by the way, is, is um, that's going to... Uh, be there like import and all that sort of jazz tax yada yada but still uh, it's, it's amazing uh, it's a you know it's a 25 percent hike and we'll okay, still well, have to pay a fortune in delivery as well let me ask you this i mean yeah. there's a, there's a lot of people that have objected to haslab yeah they don't they don't like the idea that a, a big toy company 
would charge up Ooh. front for high ticket items, like whether it's Jabba Sail Barge, whether it's the Sentinel, whether it's Unicron for almost 600 bucks or this. Yeah. Where do you fall on that? Do you think that HasLab should be doing this kind of thing or not? I, I, right. I would say they wouldn't make this. They wouldn't, they wouldn't make 14,000 of these, uh, Ad hominy and just stick it into produ- uh, stick it into general sale. They I, they wouldn't take that risk. I agree. And so for something like this to be made, I think they have to go down this route to cover themselves. Um, otherwise, I like I don't think we'd see the sale barge. I don't think we would have seen the sentinels. You know, I don't think we would have seen seen them um, take a punt on any of it. This is. Uh, we were talking uh, <laughs> so many days ago, uh, mon- Monday. <laughs> uh, we were talking so many days ago about, um, uh, and we'll talk about this later in the show, no doubt. Uh, some something like uh, hot toys and side sh- uh, or side show, but hot toys pr- primarily, uh, not taking a risk on on you know figures which we're snapping up on third party, right, and. Uh, you know, they're sticking with the safety of the Mandalorian. Uh, they're sticking with the safety of um, the prequel trilogy, which is proving to be much more productive than, you know, the sequel trilogy. You know, no and one... even the Clone Wars, the Anakin and the Stap, you yeah. know, that they're giving us. Yeah, it's the Clone Wars stuff, because that's that's the popular stuff. Um, why they couldn't say, hey, look, uh, we're going to put a you know a, a figure that we know people like but we don't know in what abundance up for uh this you know uh you hit certain numbers and we'll create it i think that would be a massive winner for them yeah i mean look but i think it's you know somebody's pointing out in the chat they have to tool this thing you know they have to make the tooling to actually make this and that's a huge upfront expense Yes. And they they figured out a way. Okay, their targets fourteen thousand dollars at four hundred bucks, or fourteen thousand at four hundred dollars. They know then that they can make it and make somewhat of a profit. Now I, I have no objection for Hasbro making a toy where they make a profit. I, I that's business, and that's, that's business. Yeah, that's business. And I I've never you know it's funny. I w- we walk the dogs every night, and I was I was having a conversation with Elizabeth about capitalism. And I said, capitalism is great. The problem is human beings are not. So human beings are constantly trying to subvert capitalism by being too greedy. But Mm -hmm. capitalism as an economic platform works really well. The problem is everybody wants to make more money. So they're trying to subvert the capitalist system by circumventing tax law or by shortchanging you on your product or whatever. But with Hasbro here, they're like, okay, we are going to make a certain product made of a certain material that's going to cost a certain amount to make. Plus, we're a company. We don't do things for free. So we have to figure out how much we can make on it to make it worth our while. But then at the same time, they have to make it palatable for consumers to buy, for collectors to buy. So in my mind, this is the perfect way that capitalism works. You have a choice. You don't have to buy this. You know, yeah. and, and they've they've made it to work for them. I mean, that's what HasLab is doing. They could never afford to build a, a, a sale barge to be that big. They could never sell that at retail. They're never going to get stores to pay what the wholesale price is on that because it's too expensive. Yeah. You know, so they, they do these things and they figure out, okay, how do we make this work all the way around? We make our collector crew happy. And you never know. Like Hot Toys has made some great figures that I love that didn't sell like Eric Draven from The Crow or even the RoboCop figures. And they they do limited runs, so they become valuable in the secondary market. But as Justin was telling us, the 89 Batmobile, especially in Hong Kong, didn't sell. It was too big. They they didn't, and it was available for a long time. You could pick one up at retail, if not less. Of course, now over the last 10 years, a lot more collectors have come into the Hot Toys market and they wanted that Batmobile because it's almost 10 years old. Mm-hmm. They can't get it. So, but Hot Toys at the time, they're like, we got we took a bath on this. 
so they didn't sell as many as they want. Eventually, they they sell out. But or like the Ecto One for the six scale Ghostbusters figures, you know, they made only enough of those. That that thing is gone, gone. And you know, with this, people complain, but it's four hundred dollars. It's thirty six inches <laughs> tall. Uh, for what it is, I think it's it's uh, compared, especially to Hot Toys. If you're a Hot yes. Toys collector. You know, this is this is as much as an iron uh, a die cast Iron a Man die figure. Cast Iron Man, yeah, yeah. It's that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's a die cast Iron Man figure, that's three times the size. Yeah, and that alone, I mean, I will put this on the top of my Maja cases. You know, presiding over all of it. Oh, you could you could have uh, Wolverine jumping at the ground. You know, you could have Galactus holding Wolverine as he's got his claws out. You know, you could have uh, one of them sort of trying to get attached them to, to make it look as if they're coming over the shoulder. There's so, you know, there's so much that you could do with this Galactus and um, just in terms of, of, of posing. But yeah, from a business perspective, this uh, to me, it makes all the sense in the world because they're covering themselves. Everything that they make is bespoke. Yep. You know, then they're not using old, you know, oh, well, we can reuse this and reuse that. No, everything's bespoke. Yep. Uh, for these items, and I don't think people quite uh, appreciate how much money comes into the design element, even before you've got to any sort of production. It's it's the design element of how to get it functional and working and practical and balanced and yada yada yada. And uh, you know, there's there's a lot of effort that goes into this, a lot of time that uh, an effort that goes into this. Retail market just wouldn't work for a product like this. Um, nope. So I don't have a problem with that because uh, if if somebody um, if somebody wants to come in, oh, oh yeah, if somebody wants to come in from the collector's market and spend that money, the consumer hasn't been hurt. Nope. And if the consumer says, "Well, this isn't this isn't fair," you've you've got sixty days, or you know, I think it's sixty days they put it up for, or even you know. Uh, so you got sixty days to 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 come up with the funds because they don't take it until right at the end, I believe. Uh, so you got sixty days to come up with the funding. You can just go onto a website and sign up. Yep. So you you can do it. You're not missing out on anything. Um. So I I don't see. I don't see what the problem is because this is product you would never see. If it was product that you would see, if they were putting a bunch of black series or, or G.I. Joe um, classifieds like this, then, yeah, it wouldn't make any sense because that can be mass produced and yada, yada, yada. There's no uh, shops would snap them up. Oh, my God. My forehead is actually cold. Nice. I'm getting hot uh, here in my uh, my uh, yeah. place I'm staying. <laughs> so they could they could snap all of that up at retail. Mm -hmm. so i don't know uh, i i just i know i think i think it's a little bit of complaining for complaining's sake um I, you know i think i think some of it is they miss out then they go to the secondary market and then the secondary market is screwing them over with the price yeah and i think that's the frustrating element to it but if you're you know because they're not going to stop at fourteen thousand. that's the minimum that they want right right so, you know, it goes 14, 16, 18, 20. They don't, they're okay. That 14 would just expand. Yep. By the uh, way, maybe, I, did, maybe, I did send you in your uh, private yeah, chat. Yeah, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Dude, how cool is that figure? Uh, we'll look at this in a moment. We'll look yeah. at this in a moment. Um, but, but I think that, you know, I, I think it's an interesting philosophical point because I always see people getting upset. Well, why is Haslab? And it's like these figures are, they're too big. The tooling, the manufacturing, it, it's beyond – it is Hasbro, and their their whole uh, methodology is based on selling certain volumes of figures, like when they do a Star Wars black figure or a vehicle or something. Like I, I, w something I didn't buy that I fully intend to buy at one point is the Black Series TIE Fighter that they came out with. That mm -hmm. TIE Fighter is awesome. And I want to get it and hang it from my hang it from the ceiling of the Rob Observatory to join my model rockets. I um, uh, I have it. You do? Mm -hmm. Is it awesome? Yeah. 
it's See, packed. I... It's packed away at the moment. It's in yeah. my. It's in my cupboard. It's in my cupboard in the uh, in the in the boudoir. Uh, but yeah, I, I got that. I got the Black Series Tie Fighter because um, I do love the tie. I did, you know, do love the Tie Fighter design. I I got the Snow Speeder as well. The Black Series Snow Speeder as well. So yeah. It's all gravy, baby. Chat. I just, just a, just a social experiment in the chat. Um, have any of you, while we've been discussing this, uh, just be honest. There's no reason to lie. Just be honest. Uh, has any of you, since we've just been discussing this Galactus, uh, pre-ordered a Galactus? I'm just interested. I'm just interested to, um, to find out because I think one thing that that Has Labs doesn't do well. Is it doesn't promote its um, items, you know? It do, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't get the the word out there that these things are um, available. Agreed. So we got one. We got one. I mean, that's there. You go. S beam. Uh, S beam ordered it. Yeah. So this is a question. Like, like Clyde said, maybe. <laughs> so I think that's a yes, but. They um now now bionic sasquatch has said yeah as well if you disagreed obviously you you you've disagreed with some of hasbro's policies you know social yeah. policies would that stop you from buying a toy like if there was a company whose uh political ideology or or policy you didn't agree with would that stop you from buying uh galactus i mean i i i should i mean technically i shouldn't because um yeah, you're you're a brand. I don't need to know your politics. They're right, no, they're, they're, they have no bearing in the world. See, uh, that's how I feel toy. about it. I'm like, if you're making something that I want, and you're a toy company, you know, I I I'm like, uh, how how you're not a political activist company anyway. You know, you're a toy company, and eventually the the marketplace is going to uh, it's going to weed you out, depending on what the marketplace decides. Uh. I just want the toy. <laughs> yeah. And maybe that makes me a bad person. No, we just want the toy. We don't care about your politics. Get your politics out of your toys, though. You know? Uh that's that's not that's not what you're there for. You've been you've been doing this for donkey's years. Uh suddenly coming up with this this um ideology out of your asshole. No, you just you're just hitting current day sensibilities and thinking you you you're two steps ahead of the game when really uh you're just showing that you're you're fucking retarded uh and just give us toys that's all we want to see yeah we just want to see colorful sexy toys i mean i miss the days when kenner made for christmas a xenomorph from the original alien <laughs> not caring about what its effect was on children or how about mattel making battlestar galactica ships that would fire missiles and some kid puts it down its throat and the kid chokes to death and then they stop they the, i got the message about sending in if you send in your missiles we'll give you a hot wheels toy yeah and my mom was like oh are you gonna i'm like mom are you what are you kidding me i yeah. promised her i said mom i'm never gonna stick my viper toy down my throat and fire <laughs> a missile down my esophagus i promise you i will never <laughs> choke to death I'm not that dumb. I don't think I ever stuck a toy in my mouth. Yeah, not no. A woman's titty. Well, it depends where it came from. Sometimes you <laughs> never know. But um, uh, <laughs> ladies, uh, here's the thing. Like, like I, I, I do believe. Like, you know, there, there are things, there are things in life that you have to take responsibility for. And parents tell your kids don't sh stuff stuff down your throat and fire missiles that you might choke to death on. And if yeah. they do choke to death on them. Don't blame the toy company. No, blame you, retarded child. I mean, um, somebody no. somebody said a good thing in chat. By the way, there's still uh, time, Rob. <laughs> they said, "Just some guy, have you pre-ordered the Galactus, or are you going to pre-order the Galactus?" So by the I way, don't I, know, I don't know. I don't want to call you out. When I say call you out, I mean force you to to give an answer that you may or may not want to give. But if you if you want to share, if you want to share that dude, that uh, be interesting to see. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to get it. Yeah, me too. By the way, can uh, I? Just... And I'm ang I'm angry at myself because you know, screw Hasbro's um, uh, goddamn uh, policies. 
Um, but I won't be teaching them to any fucking children I know. I won't be teaching them to my nephew uh, or anything like that whatsoever. And they do Transformers, G.I. Joe. They do the HasLab stuff. Um, hopefully with them being caught, uh, called out on it, it might force them to do what other companies have done and suddenly just backtrack. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this to me is just too good not to not to pick up. Yeah. By the way, Clint Matthews says, what if you had a toy of Jeff Bezos's rocket? Would you stick that in your mouth? No, I'd put it in my ass, frankly. Ah! <laughs> I mean, hopefully I'd, I'd be getting I'd, a reach around I'd by a lovely lady at the same time. Fire. Um, but press uh, launch. Yeah, and then press <laughs> That's what Woo! she said. You know, it depends on who your partner is, whether I'm going to put it in my mouth or where I'm going to put it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, um, Pegged but... by the bears. <laughs> but no i mean i think that uh yeah i i toy companies should make toys and, yeah um yeah just brand <laughs> shut up brand i think is the perfect um... the neighbor of the beast said i beat him to it <laughs> i didn't mean to steal your thunder there sir <laughs> oops <laughs> um well i mean hey uh man of war uh this is this is perfect for one in 12s as well so yeah uh, you know, that's, uh, I mean, these are technically designed for one in 12s, you know, more than one in sixes, but by the way, um, I did want to give a shout out. I don't, I don't know if he's here, but, uh, just some guys, his video about, um, Lord of the Rings, the, 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 the Tolkien, the Tolkien society, man, you know, I don't think anyone has done such spot on reporting about it as much as just some guy has. And what's interesting is his, his love of Tolkien's work just shines through in those videos. Oh yeah, yeah, which yeah. I think is the most important thing. But man, is he spot on! I want to party oh, with that guy. I want to go to Chicago and party mm. with just some guy. Yeah. So <laughs> good video. Places rocket up your ass. <laughs> Launch. Um. Yeah. I mean, I I love the guy. I think he's absolutely great. I had him on the Real BBC last night. Yeah, yesterday and um. We literally, the whole group of us, there he is. The whole group of us, we're all just, uh, we basically just chatted for five hours and it went past in the blink of an eye. It was just insanity. Um, no, I'll bet. I didn't I see that. Do, uh, yeah, I had to do a square up today because we were just going, we we're just like going from subject to subject. And, you know, the, it was great. I absolutely loved it. I'm here and I'm protecting my wallet, he says. You have no power here. <laughs> that, you, you keep telling yourself that, buddy. You said okay. You keep I mean, no, just that. okay. No power. <laughs> I hunger. Oh, I'm gonna get you. Come on. Click is gonna get you. Click is gonna get you. Click is gonna get you. <laughs> That's your new song, dude. You got to drop that song, you know, to go with uh, uh, yeah, Ocean yeah, Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ocean the Man. Follow up to you. The follow up to Ocean <laughs> Man. Galactus is gonna get you. Uh yeah I I I I'm gonna I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get it um I'm so pissed off at missing off on the Sentinel I will probably pick up a Sentinel from the secondary market and and hurt myself because I hurt myself today uh because of that but I need those two because I think they'll be so particularly the Sentinel uh, I think they'll be so much fun to have with you one in six um Marvels toys that I got. And it creates a it creates a new scene, creates a new story. Yeah, but damn, and you could you could have that in a, uh, you could have that Galactus in two DF sixties. You just take the base off the roof and the base off one, and have it go through. <laughs> Man, I can't get. Uh, have you started building any of your module cases yet? Not yet. No, I'm gonna do them when I open the channel. So I'm gonna start. Oh. I'm gonna. Yeah, you know what? I need to do that. I need because uh, I got one more to build, and people will want to see their observatory. And I gotta, yeah, and I got more lights and everything to put up, which I'm going to do. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm liking my, my my fan. By the way, uh, this is no word of a lie, folks. As soon as my uh, portable AC unit arrived, I came back to my desk. And the the weather bar on my desk had changed to rain incoming. 
<laughs> from from Sunny. I love it. Rain incoming. It's warmer. It's colder outside of a night than it is in my house. Yeah. My cat at the minute is 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 sleeping outside. She's mithering me to let her out and just she's just going to the tree in my, in my garden and just What is it in Yorkshire there like 75 degrees or what? Uh yeah yeah 52. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to know how hot it is here in Pasadena, dude? Let's see. But you have a you have AC units in America. We don't have them in houses in the UK. That's true. well, yeah, I I have a portable one here in the Robs. It's a garage, so it's it's horribly uh it's horrible. I mean, I think I'm, uh, this desktop is going to suit for now, but I think I'm going to get a proper big, you know, when I say big, you know, like a gas, how you'd have like a gas one, yeah, uh, portable AC unit for so that I'm not caught short uh, next time. Yeah, it's 90 degrees Celsius right here, or 90 degrees Fahrenheit, pardon me. Yeah. Uh, if it was Celsius, you probably would be. I'd be dead. Dancing. I'd yeah. be dead. <laughs> no, it's it's ninety degrees, and my little. I have to say, I bought it last year. My portable AC unit it works kind of well. It's all right. It's not bad. You know. Mm, uh, I got a, I got a message uh, from Purple Valkyrie, and she mm. says, "Why don't you get Rob to buy you one at the American price?" And then give him the other a hundred to to ship. Well, I do owe you. You did provide. You know, I think it's that's you know what quid pro quo, Clarice. No, you don't know what you owe me. You don't owe me for shit. Well, you got me a very nice birthday present. Your birthday's it's your coming birthday. up. Yeah, but I mean, I think I think Purple Valkyrie <laughs> has something there. Plus, you know, it'd be cool. What if I got two of them at the same time? Elizabeth would freak out, and that'd be worth seeing. What did you buy? What did you Two. buy? Well, let me this. Tell you. What? And I didn't just get one. I got fucking. Two. Oh. And she'd be like, oh, you got one for me? No. <laughs> no. Actually, that's actually that's the way. I think that's I think Purple Valkyrie, you know, not not to not I can listen to Purple Valkyries. I want to like hire her to read a Star Trek novel, like my favorite Star Trek novel in her with her accent like i would do that mm. uh but she's she's not wrong she's a wise woman yeah i mean i um you know the self-transforming optimus primes oh dude those I got, are Gar i i've i've paid gary so so i bought mine through gary when does that come out um i think october wow you know i've been thinking getting about getting one of those it's pretty dope dude Pretty dope. I don't, but just all the pose you can have it in and, and the, just the app where it just, you know, it's so cool. Yeah. So, right. Okay. So, um, I just, I just want to know. Don't put no. Just put yes if you have. So, who here has uh, pre-ordered a Galactus uh, after seeing it now? Just put yes if you have. Don't, if you haven't, just don't. This video. Uh, it's batteries. It's triple. Uh, yeah, actually, that's a good point. I'll have to see if the uh, the batteries is. You have like AAA batteries and stuff. If it's battery operated, it's fine because the batteries have just been the same. Yeah, I mean, uh, in my drawer, I've always got uh, batteries. By the way, did I show you? I don't know if you saw my picture on Instagram. I found my Galoob, uh, nineteen eighty seven mm -hmm. diecast. Oh. Uh, uh, TNG Enterprise, my Enterprise D. Let's this was the first. One. Yeah, look at this. Look at this is in this is diecast. It's in really Hi. good shape, and look what it does. Oh, I thought I had lost this, and if you look at it, I mean, this is a really great diecast toy. The proportions are accurate. Uh, I found this in a box. I forgot I had it. It's almost brand new. And this sucker is 34 years old. That's cray cray. I know. Isn't that cool? And it's 
It's weighty. It weighty. Yeah, imagine it's weighty. You know what the problem is? It only came like this. It needed it, it needs a stand. Yeah. Like there's no stand, and I don't like the fact that it, you know, they had to make it put this slice in here. Are you you're still getting your Eagle Moss Enterprise, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Are you watching I've, the YouTube? The YouTube videos of that it. British dude who no, assembled. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not until I get around to. Um, I'm gonna try and tackle it, and then and then we're gonna have him on standby on the iPad. <laughs> I think you and I should build those together. We should. Yeah, do, I think we should just have a gay old time. We should do stream. dual streams where we actually yeah. go on live together and yeah. build the diecast enterprise. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be like the streams after this one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I you know, I did a, like an impromptu stream today because I needed to to do the um, um, the square up from yesterday because we're just doing so much of the the talky talky, and uh, yeah, I, I love doing those sort of things. It, you know, you you think right, I'm going to be an hour and out with this, just going to smash through the super chats, yeah, and then we're out, and then you know, it's suddenly it's one hour forty five minutes. Because you're having banter and you, you 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 know you're discussing stuff with your audience and, and then he's like, I gotta go I gotta stream in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's true. Uh, so those kind of things are, are pretty. Oh, what I should have no no I did the right thing. I was gonna say I should have I should have moved that to Thursday, but no, it's the right thing to do was to do it immediately. And then you know yeah, it it works out. It yeah. works out. Um, let's show, uh, something else, which I also had my eye on, uh, this, um, uh, as soon as I saw this, I was just like, oh, hell, this is pretty fucking brilliant. Dude. Look at this. Oh my God. Now, you know, I have a great big love of Michael B. Jordan. If I was black, I'd want to be either Mike Coulter or Michael B. Jordan. Look at this figure. This. Why can't, why can't he just want to be him anyway? Uh yeah well uh, I wanted I, to be Eddie Murphy when I was in the in the kid in the no 80s. but I yeah I mean I don't want to be him because he's black I want to be him because he's a beautiful beautiful man um but look at this figure my God I agree. now now as I gotta ask you mm. I have the Killmonger figure that Hot Toys made it's a great figure I love it we, we go we do we're talking about this now aren't we but come on look at this figure dude. It's, this uh, figure is unbelievable. Now it it begs the question: Why why isn't this is a third party figure? I know this is this is the leopard agent, folks. Yeah, leopard agent. Like this figure is um, amazing. The detail, the costume. Look, you bring literally these attachable grenades. Oh my he's god! Got a rifle with rocket launcher, extra. Uh, that's a sixteen mag barrel, I believe. Uh, you got his pistol on the side there. He's probably got a knife there. He, so this, this, look at this magazines. Clips. Look at this armor. Because this is the Killmonger figure that I wanted. Yeah, I mean, I understand is, yeah. they made this the Killmonger. The yeah, I, I, I look the Killmonger. Oh, I mean, I... come on, dude. Look at that. Oh man. Oh, I there's no way I am not getting this. No. This is this is fucking superb. Yeah. But yeah, I I want the hair this figure. Is great as well. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's yep. gonna be that's gonna be um sculpted hair. Level yep. of detail that's gone into to sculpting that is incredible. Mm -hmm. And his mask that he took from the um museum at the beginning. Yeah, which I think is again a great touch. A great touch. But you know, it's when these third party ones are made, they always they always have like these wonderful little references to the items that you know are referenced in you know from the from the movie, whether it just well, be a soda can or a but look at this! Look at the detail of the weapon here. Oh yeah, I mean, look at this. I, I mean, they beautiful. can't. It's beautiful, That's and stuck. I think what's happening is that look. Would you buy if this if Hot Toys made this? Yes, I would. Oh, without a doubt. But they're not going to make it. They're not going to do this figure. Look at that! Look at his watch. I love it. He's got his his ring on the chain. I know, man. And this, and, and the crazy thing is, people, this is going to cost you 
Um, probably about 50 quid less than a hot toy. Yep. Yep. Uh. I live for this kind of stuff. I live for this third party stuff. It is, it is amazing. I, I, yeah, this is uh, just a no, no brainer for me. No by the way, enough. by the way, uh, I'm going to put you something in the private chat. I, I want you to know that I pre-ordered this. I know you're mm -hmm. going to love that I pre-ordered this, and it makes me want to get yet another Brie Larson hot toy figure just to put her in it. Just so you know. Oh, now okay. Let's talk about this. I want to talk about this. Uh huh. Right. I want to. I want to talk about this because man, okay. Avengers Annual Ten is one of my favorite Marvel comic books. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about this because um, I'll I'm going to tell you right now. Mm. I'm really tempted to buy this. So this is this is Ms. Marvel. Yeah. Carol uh, Danvers. Marvel. This is Carol Danvers. Yeah. The real uh, Carol as, Danvers. Yeah, the real Carol Danvers before she, I don't know, turned into a man. I don't know. Um, uh, as she was as Ms. Marvel, and I just think this is this is great. This is sexy. This is great. I love it. Uh, the cost, you know, the the look at this. This is what we love. This is what we love. Hence that, uh, the beauty. You know, the great lightning bolt. You know. Yeah, that's the classic Miss Marvel costume. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw this and I was just like, "This is this could be this could be the Ms. Marvel that I want for my collection." Yeah, well, that's the thing. I, I was thinking about like, I know I've been getting another uh, get. I, I did not order the Endgame Captain Marvel figure, but I kind of want to just to put her in this outfit. Oh, I get you. Uh, could you take the costume? Well, I mean, what bodies it got? Well, that's the thing. I mean, I think you'd want a Fison body for this. You and want maybe, a seamless and, body. Yeah, and maybe the head sculpt. But you know what? I don't care because mm, 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 mm. Uh, it, it's. I like the fact that they're doing the comic Miss Marvel, and I'm. I'm. I, I was a fan of, you know, Avengers Annual Ten when Rogue. It's the first appearance of Rogue, uh, who who takes her powers away. Um, always like that. Oh yeah, yeah, she did. My, yeah. It would draw Chris Claremont and Michael Golden art, uh, an incredible Marvel comic, uh, one of my favorites. But you know, I saw this, uh, and uh, it's pretty dope. I'm like, okay, why not? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I saw. Yeah, when I saw this, I was like, I am, I'm legit, really tempted. I know, right? Uh, to to add it to the to the Marvel collection, have a have a proper Ms. Marvel. Not a not a, a fake ass summer Aminot <laughs> Miss Marvel or a or a Carol Manvers, you know, before before the industry was torn apart by uh, ideologues. No, this is this is you know, this is the stuff that we love. This is the stuff that we love. Yeah. And uh that's a hundred dollars. Uh, that's no fice and body, uh, body though. You'd have to get the fice and body. Yeah, you'd have to get the fice. So that's for the head, the mask, the hands, the suit, uh, the arms, sleeves, the belt, and the boots. No nope, body's not included. So you can pick your own fice and so, you know, I mean, you could. I mean, you'd be stupid. No, I'm only joking. Uh, but you could say, look, these breasts are too big. I want to go the the model down. You know, so you can pick the fice and body that you think is going to be right. Um, you know, more either comic realistic for you or just wh whichever, you know, uh, button you want to press. Uh, and Fice and Bodies are about 100 anyway. So you're going to be paying 200 for it, which is, again, less than a, about $40, $50 uh, dollars less than a regular hot toy. Right, right. So yeah, I I, uh, I got a lot of time for that. I do have a lot of time for that. And uh, maybe, 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 maybe. I mean, I've got, I'll show you what I've got. I think if I say got coming, that's going to be a little bit too on the nose. Well, I could have, well, if, if Hot Toys website was, uh, Toys Wonderland, sorry, website was, uh, oh, it's up. It is up. Oh, it's back up? It's, well, it's kind of up. It's up in a capacity. 
Um, now then, let's just let's see if I can find. All right, let me look on my do 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 do. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I need to look for. Oh, this little unit's doing its job. This is way better than the other thing I had. <laughs> you're doing it. You're doing a good job there, little little Mashan. Yeah, drink lots of water, baby. Good girl. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm making sure my cat's got constant uh, uh water. Okay, I can't. It's 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 up in a very very limited capacity. Let's let's go. Let's just try and grab a website. Jeez, man. It's third party, so you have to... <laughs> now, okay, okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, let's just grab a site. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's uh, share this. So I have two of these on order. <laughs> of course you do. Because why Tifa! wouldn't you? Tifa! Uh, this is, uh, of course, this is third party Tifa. Because uh, they're not making, you know, one in six. Uh, well, they're making some. So there might, there might actually be. There's this cloud and the sephiroth but this is a third party tifa and the reason why i've ordered two is because uh you got tifa in her hey hey her regular outfit this is with face and body you can i think this is absolutely great looking uh oh, hey uh this is a great looking uh, final fantasy 7 remake Tifa. And then I mean, hold on. I want to go. Can I go back? There you go. Look at that detail. There's brilliant. That's awesome. Um a lot of good stuff there. Yeah, and then you get this. You could get this pack, which is of course the um uh, the Queen Bee outfit. When she's uh, infiltrated the Queen Bee, uh, the Queen Bee outfit. So because I've ordered two of these, I'm going to have one Tifa in her fighting getup, and then I'm going to have one Tifa in the Queen Bee outfit uh, from the game. So I'm going to have both my Tifas doing Tifa. And uh, yeah, it's a Fison body as well that comes with it. So... Mm -hmm. There we go. I love my Tifa. I love my Tifa. Tifa! <laughs> oh, this is this is getting. I put it onto misty mode, and it's starting to get nice and cool. I got a I got a cold forehead. This is great. Uh, yeah, so I've ordered. Yeah, I, I got one which I was hoping might arrive before this stream, but it hasn't. Uh, and I've paid off the other one, but I don't know when that one is shipping. Well, there you go. You know, I did get something today that I do believe I might have ordered on a stream. Uh, I can show it. I want to show it. Can I show it? Sure. So, it, it, it in a way, it, it, this is sad because it came damaged. But I'm, you know, I'm not going to send it back because it was from a very weird Chinese third party thing. So. I saw, I love my dioramas, I love my chairs, I love, so I'm going to show this thing that I got. Uh, I got a one-sixth scale vintage gas pump. Yeah, baby. And I bought this, like a Texaco gas pump, I bought this in uh, in anticipation of getting my... 66 batmobile and i want to do a display in my magic case 
where Robin is gassing up the Batmobile while Batman's driving. So, I mean, this is pretty dope. And I guess this thing lights up. So it the base, here's what the poor base came shattered. Like it was, it was sit, it was sitting in the base. The base came uh, in pieces. Now it's only to be fair, it's only the concrete, so it's easy to well, maybe easy to fix. But I didn't know that it does light up. It comes with the thing, and you can uh you can put the batteries in in the bottom here. But as you can see, it came shattered because it was, you know, with these third party things, what are you going to do? But I do love Get them packed correctly so they don't shatter. Oh, no, no, it was beautifully packed. Okay. I just think it was it was beautifully packed. But but look at it. It's a gas pump. It's really cool. Yeah. And I'm sure it lights up and I'll put it in my case. And then it actually came the 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 gas pump was not attached. I haven't attached it. But this gas pump is die cast. Nice. So uh, it's pretty cool. And like, you know, uh, when I saw, like, like, if you fall down the rabbit hole of six scale accessories that you can buy, I don't know why I was particularly tickled for a six. Like, I've already got the 89 Hot Toys Batmobile that also has opening gas caps. Gas can, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can actually have like Michael Keaton's Batman gassing up his own batmobile if i want we all sort of falling into the diorama add-on trap at yes. the moment we're all, and we're all I, I do i do and i kind of blame jazz inc you know for yeah. doing this yeah and and i have to tell you it really pluses your action figure collection when you have these pieces because when you display them with the with the beautiful it it, it just ups the whole experience and you know what i love is if you can get a diorama piece that sort of you can make it witty like the idea that a 66 batmobile has to come to a vintage you know gas pump that's kind of cool so uh what's, cool. In, what's interesting is it looks like there's a speaker in this as well i mean you can't where it's broken but there there is a speaker there so i'm wondering if it has like a ding ding like a classic oh. like i don't know I, I didn't even know it lights up or anything so it's all attached. It looks like it's uh, it's all done, and I know that the Texco thing lights up. So we'll see if it works. But uh, you know, am I disappointed? Am I going to write to Big Bad Toy Store and go? It came shattered like this. No, because I can fix the base and just paint it gray. It's fine. And yeah, the broken well, I, pieces I, I, will just look like a, a cracks in the pavement. It's fine. You know, when you get yeah. third, but but the the pump is fine. Look at that pump; it's dope. Oh, the pump, yeah, yeah, that black base at the bottom though. That's not is that broken in any way? No, the the base of the actual. Well, it looked like the gas pump was on this concrete base. The base was completely shattered. Ah, uh. so so you know, I can put it in here, but it really doesn't matter because if worse came to worse. What what's in the base is the electronics. I can pull it out and just stick it in there and have it standing up on its own. This yeah. was just like the cement, you know, whatever. It's easy to fix. We're all hobbyists. We're not just collectors. We're hobbyists. We can fix this shit. I'll yeah. just get some super sculpy or something, and you know, done just get some hair gel, some gorilla glue hair gel. Yeah, so it's all good. But how cool is this? I, it's, it's great. It's absolutely great. Yeah, and it was like fifty bucks. Are you stick it in the bat cave? Well, you you could because hey, doesn't everyone need gas? You have those Texaco men come over and fill up. There's a like the one secret Texaco guy that gets into the bat cave to make sure the Batmobile is always gassed up. Because you know the bat can a Batman. It is a, it is a car. It is an mm -hmm. internal combustion engine. Does Batman always stop? Doesn't the it have some, so, Does it have like a nuclear reactor on the Batmobile? Or I guess it kind of does. I guess maybe it's plutonium. Yeah. In which case, this is not canonical. God. No. Damn it. <laughs> However, as you said, Michael Keaton. <laughs> right. Michael Keaton. You could have Michael Keaton in the Batmobile and Vicky Vale gas. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Right. And then someone, of course, we get dinged for being part of the patriarchy. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, hey, it's it's equality. He's right. Paying for it. She's pumping it. Yeah. 
You want equality? This is welcome to welcome to equality and have a nice day. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In a world, in a world where equality means I don't have to pump gas anymore. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, but you know what? Heavy lifting. But you know what's really funny? It really does. Now, who wants to live in a world where where the ladies are pumping the gas? The ladies don't. I mean, it might be good for us, but come on. Can you imagine if you're like if if your if your girlfriend's driving somewhere and we 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 pull into a a, a, a filling station and get some gas? And if we don't get out to pump the gas, come on, there's hell to pay. Let's face it. Gender roles, they only go so far. Oh, I know. <laughs> but they, it's amazing how many people want to forget the other side of the equation. Yeah, they don't. No girls yeah, want to pump yeah. gas. And don't be one of those people that's, well, I pump my own gas. Yeah, most of the time you do because you're alone. But when you're with somebody, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. You're alone and uh, scared. I mean, when you're driving to work, you pump your own gas. I get it. But when you go out for a Sunday drive or whatever. Right, we're going to play a game. And this game is called uh, Love It or Hate It. Uh-oh. Wow. Uh, this might be a spoiler, by the way, for Spider-Man No Way Home. So if you don't want a spoiler for Spider-Man No Way Home, um, you probably want to check out right now. Uh-oh. Uh, but uh, three, two, one. So this is the uh, a Spidey suit from Spider-Man No Way Home. Black and gold. It's got magical runes. So this is some sort of um, chimera and with Doctor Strange and the, and the spider suit. Yeah. Love it or hate it? Are you asking me? Yeah. Uh. I don't or, like or I, I don't like it. You know, I've been trying I've been trying to, I've been trying to look at it and I'm I'm like, you know why I don't like it? I don't like it because it's a mishmash of different ideas. And as Justin speculated, that maybe this is some kind of a mystical overlay that it's not really here. Uh, like it's uh, I, but I look at it and I'm like it looks to me like something I would have drawn in the second grade that I thought was really cool. Why I wouldn't can't have, they it, just let like Spider Man be Spider Man? Why has he got to be Iron Boy? And now he's got to be Strange Boy. And why has he got to be always someone else's boy? And I, what I also don't like is, like, I really liked the black Spider Man suit that was introduced in the original Secret Wars because it was an alien symbiote. You mm -hmm. know, Venom. Funny. That's where the black yeah. suit came from. And it made sense. And like, like I understand why this can look kind of cool. And again, I will reserve total judgment until I see it in the film. Maybe when I see it in the film, I'll feel differently. But like to me, this this doesn't like that's kind of cool because it's mostly the black and gold suit. I like the black and the gold. What I don't the like red feels it, right out of place. The the yeah, the red feels out of place, and so does the mystical energy. But I love the black and gold. Like to me, that's if you zoomed in a little bit, you know, and you just there's something. I mean, past that red, <laughs> you know, if yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it, it looks regal. It looks royal. Uh, there was a reason to have that suit. I'd be like, okay, maybe he's going to the prom, and that's like the black tie version of the Spider-Man suit. He's going to the prom, and his boyfriend's gonna be waiting for. Him. <laughs> but that's cool. I mean, I you know I can, but. I don't like the red. Well, that, you know, maybe that's kind of palatable, sort of. I'd have to see it. I, yeah, I don't like the red in it. Like, it's like, if in case you don't remember, this is Spider-Man. Remember, he's got red in his costume. <laughs> I don't need to see that. I, I, I want to see the black and gold, entirely black and gold, because I think that might be kind of badass. But I don't know, man. What do you think? Uh, I, I uh, hate it. <laughs> I absolutely uh, hate it. I think it looks awful. Um, I think, yeah, it, from a, just from an aesthetic perspective, this this red is just dire. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, it's it's really really dire. Uh, if the whole thing was gold, it might at least have, um, you know, a synergy to it. But 
you know, I'm just sort of like waiting for Spider Man to, to to have a Spider Man film and, and not a someone else film. So you know, I, I like I had no problem with the with Mysterio when he went from his uh, blue to his to you know a, a black when red. Okay, you went for a black and red. You know, you're feeling a little bit down. <laughs> But this is just like, hey, do you want to be Doctor Strange for a bit? Maybe? Kind of? Well, it's it's funny because I think Doctor Strange, especially in the MCU, has one of the great costumes of all time. I love Doctor Strange's costume. I love it. I love my Doctor Strange figure. And this is like a mishmash and an amalgamation. I mean, okay, he's, he's firing mystic energy. I don't, I get it. Uh, apparently it's it, it it's not part of the costume it's energy that's coming out of the costume but yeah i don't know man <laughs> again Maybe, i'd have to hmm. see it i have to see it in context yeah uh well um i mean how it fits into this the, the film is you know that's we don't know yet but uh just from from an aesthetic standpoint i uh no this just does nothing for me. And I just don't even like the mystical web and the mystical logo. Yeah, it's just like, uh, ah. Yeah. Um, the game doesn't stop there. Because I think we've got another Marmite, another Marmite uh, potential um, new... Uh, figure coming out and I, I, uh, I think you and i are going to differ on this one yeah i think you're going to like this one uh, i think we discussed this on the friday and monday show maybe uh but let's just uh, open this one this is uh the flip side, the iron flip side. yeah the, the this is now iron strange mm. are we gonna have an iron oh no we've already had an iron spider so this is now iron strange this is actually inspired by concept art from Avengers Civil War, but there's a whole... Re- I think there's a very good reason why... Endgame. It was Endgame. Uh, it was says it? Infinity War. Sorry, Infinity War. I mean. Infinity War, pardon me. Yeah, like yeah. Civil War. Infinity War. Uh, as seen in the art of Avengers Endgame, but it was concept for Infinity War. Yeah. Uh, so we basically got Iron uh, Doctor Strange in an Iron Man outfit uh, with his... Uh, I, 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 I will just say I hate this as well <laughs> i think this is fucking awful um dog uh, i just, mm, i know it's based off concept art but it never made it into a movie good reason why but i just just, just stop it <laughs> see i have to say i have to say that i like this as opposed to everything i dislike about the spider-man version because Tony Stark's suit in Infinity War is shown as being, you know, nanotech. Yeah. And and the idea that Doctor Strange is given an extra layer of protection while still the Eye of Agamotto is is there, um, I, I think as a stopgap measure, I can see Tony Stark's nanotech used to protect Doctor Strange for a limited time. You know, I don't want to see this as being obviously his normal. Um, uh, I, I don't like this as his primary fashion. I yeah. love the Doctor Strange costume so much with the cape and everything, but I think as 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 taking on the nanotech for a minute, for an instance, or using it to do battle or something, I kind of like this idea. It's kind of fun to me because it seems like something, especially with the antagonistic relationship that strange and tony stark develop at the beginning of of infinity war which i love the fact that tony maybe couldn't wield his iron man armor for whatever reason and throws the thing over to strange and he takes it on could be fun for a bit for a small amount of time but again it's non-canonical we haven't seen it and like the spider-man black and gold armor if if they showed me a scene where there was a reason behind this and it was cool. I'd be like, okay, but I do like the idea of this more than Spider-Man because as we know in, in, in from infinity war, it's new nanotech and, and somebody else could presumably wield it. So uh, this to me sums it up though, apart from the eye, 
you might as well just put a Cumberbatch head onto the Mark 50. Yep. Yep. You absolutely can. Yep. And include the Eye of Agamotto um, necklace, you know, the, the yeah, you can take yeah, it they, off yeah, your yeah. strange figure, just pop off the head and throw it on. Which there would you actually... go. He said it's still four hundred dollars. <laughs> but it doesn't. It just, but which uh, you can use to buy that Galactus. At least, at least, yeah. <laughs> at least with the Spider-Man suit, the only uh, I can't give it too much of a compliment. But the only kind of compliment I can give it is it was it was the Spider suit which was covered in um, technology and uh, mm. strange runes. Apart from the eye, this is just essentially the Mark Fifty. Yeah, and there's like if it was if it, if this was uh, like if this had runes down it or it had like gold stripes down it or something which kind of made it feel like um, the the tech had adapted to the magic instead of just hey, do you fancy putting my clothes on for a bit? Right, <laughs> right. I, then maybe I am, you know, maybe I'd have a little bit more. In actual fact, the only thing that I like is is the, is the portal. <laughs> I want that portal. That's it. Yeah. Iron Strange not winning the hearts by the looks of it in the audience either. Not uh, winning the hearts of the people in there as well. To, to me, there's just too little to justify the cost. Just way too little um, innovation there. And this is this is the frustrating side of um, this. Is, to me, is the the frustrating side of Hot Toys. We 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 discuss how you know th there's so many cool characters that could be created that people will probably pick up, and I just see this is so kind of lazy. Like, wow, we've got. All the pieces for the Mark 50. Yeah, we got to change the, the chest piece. That's one piece that needs to be changed. Then we take the head sculpt from the Infinity War Doctor Strange and we pop that onto it and be, you know, we got ourselves a toy. It's It just feels so low effort. Yeah, yeah. This is a limited time release. You've only got four hours and ten minutes left. Okay, I'm fine. It's true. I'm fine. I'm good. You know, I'm okay with that. Uh, let's have a look. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got some. Uh, we got some breaking tokenization. I mean, <laughs> breaking news. Uh, just some guy's gonna love this. You know, he <laughs> loves his tokenization. Can't can't get enough of it. Um, so it appears we have our Batgirl, and uh, she's gonna be black as well, because that's what Barbara Gordon is—a white redhead. Another redhead bites the dust. Yeah, I mean, what is it with the death? The death of gingers. I mean, I I have a particular predilection for my fr my redheads. And in the DC universe, why are our redheads being replaced? They're already rare enough as it is. Uh, well, I, I don't, I, I mean, when I say I don't care, I do care. I love redheads. I love, I love redhead green eyes. I love that, that whole thing as well. Um, They're like leather this buckets. Is just, this is people. tokenization. This is stupidity. Again, it's just more virtue signaling stupidity. Um, I just, I just, I don't know what there is to say anymore. It's just so, I'm, I'm, I'm numb. I'm getting, I'm getting so apathetic to it all, and it, and it's apathetic in a way it, that I just, I just can't even, I just can't even be asked with your movie. Do you know why? I've seen, I've seen uh, Batwoman. <laughs> you know, I've seen, I've seen the route that you've gone down. I, I, and I, and I don't, I don't care. Uh, I just, I just. Uh, well, what's I'm what's really interesting was this retroactively puts James Gordon in a. Well, I, I guess that's not that's not true because isn't Jim Gordon isn't Jeffrey Wright the new Jim Gordon in the Batman movie? This isn't the same universe, is it not? No, <laughs> I mean, 
I, I it, it's it's if it is the same universe as the Batman film, I just think it's really interesting how how like you know when I was a kid, Yvonne Craig as black Batgirl. is the new red. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because Batgirl and Starfire. Starfire is my favorite female mm. hero in the DC universe. Coriander, cor Coriander, Corian yeah, Coriander. Coriander. Um, uh, I, I, I love her, and of course, she was erased. At least the you know the way that I had come to know her. And by the way, uh, beautiful, my beautiful orange redhead. Yeah, and how about her daughter? Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> I mean, talk ah! about. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it builds I mean, up. It builds up, and it has to. What I, what I love the fact, what I love about this is that in the Heights was accused of not being Afro-Cuban <laughs> enough. I mean, I mean, Lin Manuel Miranda was accused of of of. Of I don't know what you'd call it, but uh, he got attacked for making in the heights about this. Well, it's not ethnic enough. So mm -hmm. uh, we live in a strange, strange time. As I know, we live in a retarded time, full of retarded fucking virtue signaling, far left ideological wankers. Uh, but anyway, I mean, maybe she. Uh, look, if she's a great actress and delivers a great performance, great. Yeah, good on you. Uh, you can do it without my money at the cinema. I'm so fucking tired of this. I'm so tired of this. Sick and tired of this. I really am. Is it too? Is it? It's 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 too much to ask for to just cast the characters how they should be cast. You know, it's everything. It's every fucking character now. They're either they're either now black or the fucking gay, you know, and it's just taken away, taken away, taken away, and then they turn around and they go, "Who cares? Who cares?" Now that we've changed it the way that we want it, now that we've taken away from you, who cares? Who cares if it's Taskmaster's now a fucking woman, even though it's played by a man for ninety nine percent of the fucking film? <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Well, I mean. What what I find really interesting is that as Coriander, oh. Starfire was an alien. Yes. Like and and you an know it's, orange if, alien. If you look at how they did Mantis in Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. you know, and and Palm Clementoff? Clement yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Beautiful Asian girl, but they made mm -hmm. her an alien. Yeah. You know, they made her look like an alien. And and Coriander was just made to look like uh, on America, uh, well, yeah, like when she's first dressed up, it's like, what the hell? But there's no, oh, she's an alien Harry going around doing tricks. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it was very, it was very, uh, like, I, I was disappointed. I mean, I know it's expensive to do on a TV budget, but still, like, I, I if you're going to have that character, why not do that character? I mean, you know, have you seen the video exhibit that is, a, exhibit a <laughs> Robert. Have you seen the video of of um that's been making the rounds of Carl Sagan being interviewed in 1977 about Star Wars? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, it's a great video. And he he basically says he's like, um, first of all, he talks about he's like, you know, uh, all these aliens. Uh, despite the fact that they all look like white people, he does make the he does make the point that um, that the, the humans humanoids would look the way they look because they evolved on Earth with a million mm. different ways. And he's like, the problem that I have with Star Wars is that the aliens in this galaxy would never look like the way they look in Star Wars. And he does bring up the race issue, but he basically talks about how why does everybody look like a human being from Earth? And I love it because. He's not being ironic. It was this is way before the idea of our our woke woke culture. He's mm. just saying that like it's kind of a profound failure of the imagination. And in Star Trek, they had the explanation that the Milky Way galaxy was seeded by the preservers. Yes, you know, and and they even dealt with it in a six season episode of Next Generation: The Chase. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's so hu many humanoid life forms in the Milky Way galaxy, whether it was. Cardassians or Klingons or Romulans and Vulcans because there was an ancient race of aliens that came and 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 put kind of like what they wanted to do in Prometheus but not well uh and and seeded the galaxy and that was yeah. cool I mean and we saw and that was tying in myth, uh, uh, canonically 
to the original Star Trek series, The Paradise Syndrome from the, the third season with the asteroid deflectors. It was, it was pretty cool that they did all of that. But with this, it's it's such a strange thing because I love human beings. I'm a big fan of all of our different differences, our myriad uh, uh, physical differences or intellectual differences or whatever. But it's because we're from different geographical regions. And I always thought, isn't it cool that people have a genetic history from the place they, they're from on the planet? And isn't it neat that evolution made us look the way we look because where we grew up, we had different conditions that we had to acclimate to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and our, and, and our, and our um, genetics and the way natural selection works were products of that. I think it's amazing. I love that. I think that's awesome. But yet now, now all of these classical characters are being shoehorned to fit into these, these particular ways of being, which in a way denigrates the original creator's intent as if these original creators somehow were mistaken or, or were wrong because of the way they created these characters. And I think that that's, that's not, what about the people that created the characters? Don't they deserve some say, even though they might not be here to speak up for themselves? <clears throat> I look, I'm just getting sick and tired of, uh, Characters being created, uh, being there for decades, having decades and decades of, of law, of history behind them. And then some person at Hollywood goes, I just want a black seas, or I just want a fucking Chinese or I just want to, and just, just shitting all over it for their own selfish fucking ideological choices. You know, why, why she could be a great actor. She could be fucking 10 Oscar winner. I don't give a fuck. She's not Barbara Gordon. You well, know, you're, Cast, you're... Castor, Castor is uh, something else. Castor is Nubia. Castor is someone, you know, Castor is a character that would, would uh, relate, relate to her that would fit her as, as a character. But, you're not uh, just changing I, I, her. You're changing commissioner gordon you're changing you, yeah you're changing so much it's like, it's like when they brought batwoman back and they were just like oh her parents are now jewish no, ergo bruce wayne is now half jewish or, or whatever and it's just like no no you don't get to supersede 80 years of, of batman's history because you wanted to bring batwoman back as jewish you know that's 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 not how it works you know you, but you're too thick to think about these things because you're just wanting to put your own personal fucking ideology uh into it well let me ask you this you know we're watching we've certainly seen uh star trek subverted everyone's trying to change it into something that e either you're going to make fun of it mm -hmm. like with lower decks or you're going to fundamentally change it and turn it from optimistic and hopeful into dystopian because that's fashionable today is it I don't, I, uh, why have they, have they changed it into dystopian because it's fashionable or have they changed it into dystopian because their ideology is so nihilistic well I, that it, either way i mean what's really interesting is i would think it's the biggest creative challenge to continue to tell optimistic stories when our civilization is not yeah. currently you know we we can't even have we can't even have a, a situation where some somebody if, if somebody accomplishes a feat that is hard to accomplish, uh, we'll figure out some way to destroy that accomplishment to take them down a peg. I mean, what I, what I find very distressing is that human excellence is being denigrated. And everybody wants, to, like, I, I don't want human beings to be the lowest common denominator. I want to see people, I admire people that are anomalous, that are excellent that are amazing i want to see people that take humanity forward people that are way better than me and when i see somebody doing something that's amazing i'm like that's amazing and you're part of the one percent of exceptional human beings that have existed throughout time like a shakespeare you know like a, a marcus aurelius or whoever who uh, pick your take your pick and i want to i want to aspire to those people I don't want to, to aspire. I don't want to be equal to everybody else. I like exceptional mm. human beings.
mm. exceptional human beings are the people I want to follow into the future. Yeah, they're the ones I don't, to look up to. The I want to look up to. Yeah. Yes, I want. I want excellence. I want the 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 exceptional versions of humanity to lead us into the future. I don't want to be equal with the people down in down here. I don't want to live in Flea Bottom in King's Landing. You know, I I even though I can come from there, I want to aspire to people that are great. No, you you can just have a self insert of 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 a uh, self hating person uh, who can drag you down. Hey, don't aspire to anything, folks. Just let us drag you down. Just let us drag you down to this level. Don't 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 take this this great character here. No, no, we're just gonna take this this frumpy ass fucking piece of shit uh, and say, don't bother kids. Uh, don't try and aspire to be better. Uh, just accept yourself for the fuck fuck up that you are. Don't look up to heroes. Don't look up to their to, to their heroism and, and and how they try and do better, be better, whether it's morally or or, or or physically or whatever. Don't bother. Don't bother trying. Just 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 grab another fucking burger and sit there and, and say, hey, yeah, I'm wonderful the way I am. Well, what I what I find interesting about that is the entire idea of heroes the joseph campbell hero's journey it presupposes that in our hearts and our minds we yearn to be the best people we can be you know we might not ever we might never reach that but the idea of a, a, aspiring it's to aspire. do great the word the key word is aspire yeah we aspire to do great things why is it that there is this idea that we shouldn't aspire anymore to great things that we should be accepted for how we are i understand why that is but you know what if we accept how we are and don't aspire to greatness we will die yeah we, we, will, we will be destroyed evolve, as a better, as a life yeah. form and and you know there is something about like like the idea of it that we want to pretend natural selection doesn't work I mean, I, I buy action figures and toys and all these things because I imagine that I might be one day as good as the captain of the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. You know, from the time I was five years old, I wish I was Captain James T. Kirk. I might not, might not ever be him, but I wish I was. And I'm comfortable and secure in wanting to aspire to be James T. Kirk. But now it's, not, it's, it's no longer... Uh, acceptable to have that character. Well, because he's clearly <laughs> Canadian. Who aspires to be? No, I'm just kidding. I was making a joke. Everybody, don't get mad. I love America's hat. Oi! Anyway, anyway, uh, I think let's get on to some super dupers. Uh, it's just this is just all so very very boring now. Um, and then, yeah, I'm sure the you just pat them on the back, pat them on the back, pat them on the head, and um, congratulations, you, you cast a, a, a diverse. Uh, right. Oh, why is the super chat thing doing this today? You know how sometimes the super chat window just goes fine, and then other times, yes, uh, it do. just like skews itself out. So you got a slider. It's one of those slider modes. For some reason today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna refresh and that's done absolutely nothing that's great you know one of the members of your channel uh john long last name long says last because name. because there's a large portion of people who believe that if they allow others to reach for the stars they will be left behind my question or my answer to that is what's wrong with that so people are left behind that's the world that's the universe that's how we know they, they hate people that aspire they hate people that want to be better they hate people that want to reach for the stars they want to like i said the, the crabs these are crabs in a bucket these people they will drag they will drag the other crabs down that's all they want to do just drag them down i don't know They're man gonna get out of the bucket not gonna I, get out of the bucket i agree i've always loved seeing people who are great at doing stuff yeah you know, to take it down to take it down to our level here genic i think genic's korean i'm not sure genic j-e-n-i-c he is a guy that paints Gundam models. He is. Mm. He wields an airbrush like Rembrandt. I've talked about <laughs> him a lot. I watch Jenik's channel because I watch it in awe and wonder. Because he paints a Gundam model or a 
a, mo- a car kit, a car. Mo- I could never paint cars well. He is so good at what he does. And I love watching his channel. I never feel intimidated. I never feel like, my God, if I could only fuck that guy for being able to paint like that. I look at him and I'm like, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I watch his channel because he's so talented and he makes Gundam models look so good. And I celebrate him. Yeah. He doesn't even, I don't even know what he's saying. (laughs) You know, I think he's Korean. I watch his channel. I'm like, God bless that guy. And it makes makes me feel good because he's so good at what he does. When I when I started Warhammer as a as a hobby, uh, I didn't know how to paint Warhammer figures. You know, I uh, I haven't painted a Warhammer figure in thirty years almost, and it was it's ridiculous. Uh, but what I did is I went to channels. I went to to these people who can paint like gods, like you say. I'm am I ever going to be able to paint like them? No. But what do I take out of it? I take hints that they give us because they give you yeah. great hints for, for people of all different levels. Are you just starting out? Here's a great little hint for you when you're just starting out. Do this, do that, and do that, and that's going to enable you to be like, oh, hell, that's really good. So you st- And then you watch other people and you see their styles and how they paint things, and you're like, oh, I like the way that they do that because I can't do it the way the other guy does it. He's just like, oh, la ba. And you're like, uh, when you do it, but you're like, no, that guy there does it in a way that I can sort of, oh, yeah, da. Yeah. So you start to adapt and, and you get yourself to a, to a position where you actually, you know, you create something like, I'm, I'm actually pretty damn happy with that. Is it to their level? No. But, you know, you know that that's to a, that's to a decent level and, and you wouldn't have got there. You wouldn't have even got anywhere close to that without watching these people, learning from these people, taking hints from these people, inspiration from these people, uh, and, and just stuff we had never even thought of, which just adds such a, a minuscule level of detail. But yet, but yet, you're like, oh, it makes it so much better. Yeah, and and, and isn't that great? Like, look, Yes, it's uh, wonderful. <laughs> and I love that. I love learning from people. I love people who have skills and know things that I don't know. It's the best. It's the best to learn new things and new techniques. And someone shows you, hey, man, you want to uh, uh, hang, put up a door. Like, I love learning. And what's so great, what's so great right now is on YouTube, there is somebody who's made a tutorial video. Yeah. No matter what it is, you can look up anything. Yeah. And somebody took the time, somebody who knows their shit to make a video. And isn't that awesome yeah. that we live in a time where you can just type in and go, hmm, I want to paint Warhammer models. How do I uh, do whatever? Click, and someone does a tutorial. And it's free. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And you you will get something from that. You, yep. you, will get, you will get something from that. And then that becomes your signature because you you're taking all the little bits which you can deal with and then because you're doing it over and over you're becoming better and better at it yep and then you're saying then you're saying to yourself oh okay you know maybe this is just a little bit blind i i i I need to do a little bit more here and then you go to the next level and you're just like ah brilliant yeah if i just add a little wash to this and that and then that will accentuate that and then i can just put these tiny little highlights it's amazing. But that's, and, that's that's trying to elevate yourself. That's just, you know, an example of just trying to elevate yourself. And it's the same with writing. It's the same with artistry. Uh, but but we're, we're so lazy and so nihilistic and, and, and so uh, fucking black pill at the moment. Everything's so fucking black pill. Um, we have the, the, the beauty that was uh, Roddenberry's uh, Star Trek universe. The beauty that was this this, I, I used to love the episodes of Star Trek where where I would be morally conflicted and then somebody like Picard would just go, no. And you'd just be like, God damn, I wish I could have, I wish I could have just had that, you know, that sort of morality in me just to say, just to say no, just to be like, um, um, just to be, no, not right. This is not right. You know, and and just those those episodes were, were so good, uh, where you just thought to yourself, man, you know, 
this person, this, the, the conviction of this person, they know it's wrong, you know, that they've skirted around and they're saying, no, enough's enough. Yeah. You know, even, even like, even in the first series episode where they're going to kill Wesley. I mean, I wish they would. No, but when they were going to kill Wesley and he's just like, no, you know, I know it's your laws. I know it's, I know it's how you maintain your society, but this is not killing a kid for this is not right. It's not morally right to do just so you can have your, your, your paradise of, of little, you know, sex games all day. Yep. That's what they were basically doing. It's just fucking all day. Right. Right. I like the big one. <laughs> well, I'll bet you do. That was Worf. <laughs> Even we were the girl when she says to Wesley, I'll teach you some new games. It's like, I think I'm a bit young for that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was all good. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just some common sense. You know, I kill for some fucking common sense right now. Uh, and And... You know, I I'm absolutely positive and 100 percent positive that that this this um this casting it wasn't based on the best person for the job. It, it was because the, the, the casting was specifically open to take away, uh, and 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 that's why it gets so boring now because this is all around because you tried to do that with Black Panther. We're gonna we're gonna cast a white Black Panther and just see the the absolute outrage. That would ensue when they just go right. Um, Roddy McDowell's going to be Black Panther in Black Panther Two. Uh, people would just be like, "You can't, you can, you know." It's let's read the super chats. <laughs> let's read the super chats and let's, uh, you know, learn to reach again instead of settle for for mediocrity and black film. Uh, <laughs> with a five dollar high RMB and as what, what, little hot dog at the end there as well. Uh, hello to you too, uh, Luke with a one pound fifty phallic. What, what. Now then, here we go. We're going to go back to the Haslabs uh, business. Yes, Man of War six six five neighbor of the beast with a six dollar sixty five super chat says. Uh, one of two has labs because he does two at six dollar sixty five super chats. Uh, has labs has its hooks in me for over six hundred dollars for the hero quest reboot. With has labs latest scumbaggery, uh, has me considering pulling my support if I'm mm. able. Even with the unhealthy love I've harbored for this IP over thirty years. Doing so is extremely difficult, but I speak with my wallet. Yeah, uh, you know, we had a chat about this. Uh, we had a chat about this earlier. It's, it, I, I do think it's like a shut up brand. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm conflicted, but I'm like, hey, am I going to get this Galactus? And I'll get this Galactus. Am I a hypocrite then? Uh, and it, and it, yeah, this is, the, you know, this is where I'm saying this is one of these times where I just need. Picard to put his hand on my shoulder and go, as don't do it. You know? <laughs> yes, Sean Luke from the next generation series, uh, not movies, not Picard. Um, you know, uh, or, or or something like that. Um because yeah, I kids just let kids play, let collectors collect. Uh your politics is no place in, in toys. So shut up, Brand. Anything you want to add further to that? Because we did have a discussion. No, no. I mean, I think I, I it, it's a tough call. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, you know, for me, a toy company is making toys, and if I want their toy, I mean, maybe this is a a flaw in my character. Why, well, if they're making a toy, I want I want that toy. I don't care about anything else. Now. Their ideology? Should I care about it? Yeah, I should. Should I patronize a company that I don't agree with ideo ideologically? Probably. But no one else is making it three foot collectors. I know. And, and it comes down to first of all, a toy company is not going to ever make any inroads into the society that I live in to make a difference because it's a toy company. 
And at the end of the day, yes, <laughs> uh, I, I'm like, uh, is that where I like, I'm like, you know what, before they're going to do anything harmful, I'm going to get my Galactus. And that might seem ridiculous, but I'm like, my time on this planet is limited. And, and ultimately it's like, do I care about the environment? Yes, because I care about future generations. I would like to see the human animal move into the future millennia after millennia after millennia. And if, if someone's polluting the environment or something, then I'm more concerned about that because that's a dumb thing to do. You wouldn't leave your kitchen 10% dirty, would you? No, you clean oh, the environment. 100%. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, okay, I can't speak to that. But I'm just like, um, look, Hasbro makes toys. That's what they do. And if I want a toy from Hasbro, I'm going to buy it. The fact that they're going to dip their toes into whatever they're dipping their toes into, I'm like, uh, that's not going to help your business model. There's no, no profit in that. I, I know you're trying to curry favor in the short term, but just make your goddamn Galactus and give it to me. And here's my money. <laughs> Does that make me a bad person, ass? I don't know. No, I, you're know, not a, I know you're not a bad person. But I, I think about it. Bad person, but I it, think it, about it. I think about it. Like, should I not? Should I not patronize? Well, that's, that's that? why I said this is what I need Picard to put his hand on my shoulder and, and tell me not to because I want my toy. Well, and that's the whole thing. But the problem is it's not like Hasbro is some political action committee that is also making toys. Yes. It's you not know? like um, the, the, the Democratic Party... Uh, doing politics, but we're also making Transformers. <laughs> yes, and it's not that way. And if it was, I'd be like, uh, that's a whole different issue. Yeah, yeah. But Hasbro's raison d'etre is to make toys. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, what they're not doing is is crossing over into pol the political arena. It's not going to go well. So, you know, I've been buying Hasbro toys most of my life. Uh, give me my Galactus. I'm paying for it and make it in a timely fashion. When you say you are going to do it, that's all I need from you. But on Hold the other hand, and then, on the um, other hand, on Twitter, I'll be made to feel guilty that I feel this way. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, how dare you? You how hypocrite! Dare you buy that three foot I Galactus? I want my fucking toy. I want my fucking toy. Yeah, and I'm like, you know what? If I'm lucky, I want uh, my toy from the toy company. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want my toy from the toy company. That's what I want. That's all I want. I don't want. I don't want you know a voting slip from them. You know, I don't want a uh, religious doctrine from them. No. I just want my toy. I just want my fucking toy. I just want my toy. Uh, <laughs> Jaden May uh, Majai, maybe uh, with the two dollars says, "Did y'all see the Asmus Toys Ash one in six figure?" Yes, uh, it was on Toys Wonderland, but I can't bring it up now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I didn't get to look. At, I saw it like from a distance, like I saw it in in rows, but I hadn't clicked on yet to to get a really good look. But I saw um, I saw certain aspects of it, like the trap door and you know the demon coming out of the trap door and uh, the boomstick and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I'd like to give it a um, a proper look over. Uh, to see what it's like, but um, can I look pretty cool? Rob, Robert Yeah. Yeah? Uh, yeah, why not? Looks yeah, good why, not? why not? Why I not? I mean, you know, our, our default position on the show is yes. Yes, yes. You know, and, and what, I, what I love now is we are living through an embarrassment of riches. We are getting so much wonderful stuff, and it really, what the, the real problem I have is how do I be discerning? You know, like, what do I want to collect? Like, you collect Transformers. Yeah. You collect Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. You collect certain Marvel characters, mm -hmm. maybe some Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it really comes down to what it, what are your limits as a collector? Which, I mean, I would want to collect everything because I, I find everything to be cool. Like, I've, I, that, that one girl that, that, like, she's part of like the Chinese education books that girl that comes with the machine guns and the little oh, bear yeah, in her yeah. backpack like i don't even know what that is no but i saw that thing i look right and i'm like click <laughs> and apparently it's one of two characters that populated uh textbooks for chinese students in the 80s and that wow. alone for me is like oh wow i want that and it's a riff on those characters i'm like okay so the question is if you like something buy it <sighs> If you Am I up? I'm trying to find a couple of things. 
trying to find a couple of vin- when I say vintage, we're, we're, yeah, yeah, I'd say vintage. If you can call a seventy-seven uh, Star Wars toy vintage, you can call this vintage. I mean, I it's guess. I would say it's an OG Star Wars toy, an OG, mm. you know, mm. right? Wouldn't it be? Yeah, it's OG, but you could say it's vintage now. It's you know, forty something 40, years. Yeah, old. dude, forty-four years old, man. Yeesh. Uh, SJ Almighty uh, with two, because there's two of us, so you've now been promoted to the rank of Diamond Geezer. Oh, super stickers for one pound forty nine each. SJ Almighty, thank you very much. Uh, great devastation with a five pound says. Did you see that Toys Wonderland website is shut down because Sideshow has went after them? Yes. <sighs> This is, um, uh, I think SciShow are opening themselves up to some really uh, nasty legal recourse because they are using Hot Toys as leverage and they do not own the rights to Hot Toys. Uh, so they could get themselves into some some legal. I think they're pushing the weight at the moment. Or, the, char- or the characters. Yeah. But they're pushing the weight at the moment and they're, they're using that. And if, if they're pushed back on, I think Sideshow could be in a bit of trouble. Well, you know, I've been thinking about this. Like, I, you know, on the other day, I, I showed, I've been ordering from Sideshow for probably 15 years. And I knew that one of the founders of Sideshow, when he worked at a hobby store here in LA called, um, uh, why am I drawing a blank on it? But it's on Lancashire Boulevard. And um, actually, it's not on Lancashire Boulevard. It's on Laurel Canyon. And it's, uh, his name's Tom. And uh, Kitcraft, Kitcraft is the name of the store. And <laughs> Hot Toys began by making unlicensed third-party figures. George Lucas and Ethan Hunt from the Mission Impossible films. Mm-hmm. And so I, I see what Sideshow is doing, and I look at it, and I'm like, why are you bullying a company in Hong Kong and and destroying their livelihood? Like like Justin was pointing out. I mean, I have, I have, I have over four. I have four figures of pre-orders at Sideshow. I've loved them, and I really, I don't understand what it is they're trying to accomplish by going after Hong Kong sellers or resellers or or companies that are selling third-party figures. I mean, the people that are buying from Toys Wonderland are not going to be buying from you. You don't have mm-hmm. a worldwide monopoly in Hot Toys figures, so no. To go after, I mean, Toys Wonderland is they sell all kinds of different things that you don't sell. And I don't understand why, why, why do I not have my Captain America from Endgame that has been paid off for months? And yet you're going after Toys Wonderland, another company that I have pre orders at. Why are you doing that? And until I've got my figure. I don't appreciate you going after other retailers that I buy from. Mm. And this isn't a hot toy. This isn't, you know, hot toys getting dragged into this. It's not their fault. No, it's, it's side, it's sideshow collectibles fault, which is completely different. Um, No, I mean, I mean the, the, the people that run toys wonderland are going to secret base. They're literally going to the hot toys headquarters and buying from that, that headquarters. Now I understand you know, Sideshow might have exclusive wholesale deal deals with other companies, other retailers, and that's what they have to do. They are compelled by their agreements to go after these retailers. If that's the case, then they should flat out say it. We are the ho- wholesalers for these companies, and by doing that, but I don't think it's an option. Why would why would why would Sideshow be a wholesaler for somebody that is in Hong Kong in where they Hong can Kong. walk down the street and go buy from uh, the Hot Toys headquarters? I, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's very frustrating because I, I got a lot of pre-orders open with Sideshow right now. Me too. A lot. And uh, they, they're like, well, if you cancel your pre-order you'll lose your deposit um but i i would cancel the whole damn lot right now 
uh, yeah. to, send a, to send a message to Sideshow, I would say, look, can, I want everything cancelled off. Everything cancelled off. Uh, and I would then I I would take that money and I would I would just give it all to fucking Toys One Land to get. Well, that's I mean I have to say I'm kind of there myself, and I'm talking four figures. Mm. You know that that that's money that they already have of mine. You know, and it's I'll take it back. And uh, I'm sure, like a bank, they've already spent it. They've already yeah. used it for for other things, and I and I love sideshow, and I I don't want it. Just I, I'm like, is that how you're spending your money? I mean, maybe they're compelled to do so, but if they are compelled to do so, let's have some transparency. Let's understand your business practices, because as a consumer who is giving you my money, like a bank, for yeah. years to invest or do what you want to do, in some cases, you my money you've had for two years. You know, where is it? What are you doing? And why are you going after a company in Hong Kong? Well, is that I, the... I'm really legitimately thinking about calling Sideshow and speaking to them. Yeah. Uh, I want to speak to somebody there uh, and 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 uh, have a word with the, uh, maybe the, the person, you know, I won't say who they are, but the person who's in the, the you know, the letter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and actually have a conversation with them. Um. Because not only are they fucking with Toys Wonderland, but they're fucking with me. Yeah. Because of all the stuff. I've got uh, two pages of paid off stuff at Toys Wonderland, which is yep. yet to ship. Yep. And they're pay and that's paid off. That's that's thousands of dollars, you know, three, four thousand dollars worth of, of stuff. Uh, and they're fucking with me by trying to close down their, their company. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're saying, hey, come to, come to us and give us your business. And it's just like, and they're doing Are this. Are you fucking kidding me? It's they did it during their sideshow convention. Like yes. the letters, they're they're having a big. Here's what we're doing: we're celebrating, announcing all these new products, and at the same time, they're going after small retailers in different countries. I will Karen the shit out of it. <laughs> I will Karen the shit out. I mean, of it. Never thought that doing toy streams would turn into some ideological discussion about, you know, going sticking it to the man. And I never thought of sideshow as being the man. But 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 I'm like, bruh, I want to buy action figures and statues and whatever from you. That's all I want to do. I don't want to hear about you using your legal muscle to go after other retailers. Yeah. In a different country. Uh, and they, violating here, the here, first... Let me throw this one at you. What if they start going after jazzing for Star Wars? Because that's what they're essentially doing with Hot Toys. Yeah, I. They're taking yep. a brand, and they're saying we have the you know we are the intellectual owners of this brand. No, you're not. No, you're not. You are not at all. Um. So yeah, it would be. Uh, yeah, I, 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 somebody said do it on stream. No, I wouldn't do it. This would be a personal conversation. Um. I mean, I might obviously talk about the repercussions of the conversation afterwards, obviously, uh, but I, I couldn't do it on stream. But um, yeah, I mean, I could just say, look, anything that I've paid off in full, uh, you know, obviously keep because you know you ain't keeping that. Well, I think uh, that we so, should we so should ex that. we Sorry, should go on, go on. Ex we should extend an invitation to anyone from sideshow whether it's hot toys here with as whether mm. it's on my channel one fully articulated or whether it's on justin's collection i think we should extend whether it's an olive branch or whatever to anybody from sideshow to come on our show and explain to us we as consumers who have spent thousands of dollars with your company why are you devoting any of your economic resources to going after other retailers while we still wait for products that we've prepaid for through your company? I, I'm in the UK and I've had my Captain America for two months. You're in America. You've paid it off. You ordered it before me. You haven't even got it. That is correct. Why is Robert waiting for his Captain fucking America? Why are we waiting for our fucking why why haven't we had our datas? Well that that's a third that's a different company though. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but you know, if they're shipping then then if Sideshow of uh of you know, why is 
Why is uh, Toys Wonderland? Oh, 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 why is Toys Wonderland shipping 501sts and, and you still got them on pre order? Well, that's therein lies the reason they're going because, after because they went Toys exactly Wonderland. they went down the street and they bought the fucking product. Yeah, and then they said, Hey, we're going to sell that product on our website. Yeah. And, and I think that that's definitely problematic. And I think now what's what's really interesting is these are people selling toys. They're selling joy. And and yet, I've never liked destroyers of joy. And that's what no. they became. And now, you know, I've got six Maja cases on, on pre-order that are paid off. I've got, you know, my battle damage Thanos or whatever paid off. Captain America is paid off. You know? I mean... These are not. It's 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 interesting. Uh, yeah, I uh, I mean, I paid off my uh, tumbler. I've I've paid off my, um, you know, the Dark Knight Batman. I think I've paid off my Batman Superman. Yeah, I mean, Batman, Toys Wonderland. Batman. I've been paying off my Ecto One. You know, I don't want that. Uh, it's been going on for a long time via Toys Wonderland. I'm like, look, I want my Ecto One. And uh, uh, and you know what else? I mean, it's interesting. The Toys Wonderland site going down. Someone says Paul Lewis says it goes down during Sideshow Con. Yeah, that's how uncool is that? And also someone like Justin, who's one of the biggest worldwide streamers of Hot Toys. Maybe not the biggest, but certainly the most consistent. And he has a relationship with Toys Wonderland. I can't help but feel there's a, a, an element of personal vendetta against someone that does nothing he justin has gone and done great streams about how sideshow only when they make their x-men figures or their dc comics figures justin has gone on and waxed rhapsodic about how much he likes sideshow product and they go after him they bar him from events they don't help him out whereas toys wonderland will and you're like wow that's amazing justin I, I all he is is enthusiastic about sideshow product. Yeah. And yet he's in the middle of this position where they actively want to bar him from events. Why would you do that? I mean, how many streams does he have to do that shows how much he likes his, their product? We I mean, one of the, the major reasons that which we which we discuss is is the third party element. Mm-hmm. But if you're not prepared to make these figures, it's not hurting you because you're never going to do them. And sure, okay, you want to you want to protect your intellectual property. Okay, why don't you flex your intellectual property then and actually make the damn thing? Look, you know it's funny. I I showed this on the stream on Monday. Here is a black box toys uh, Ana de Armas Joy from Blade Runner 2049. I really like this figure. No one, no licensed company was going to get the Blade Runner 2049 license. Nobody. But black box did. They made it. I'm happy to have it. I wouldn't get it anywhere else. If I could, I would. If they could give me a better Ama de Armas head sculpt, this one isn't bad. But it's you know it's Not it's bad. more doll like and whatever the 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 figure the rude hair it's all very cool, but no one else is going to make this. So I I I couldn't be happier that I picked up a knock. Oh yeah, a, a Doctor Octopus, a third party because no one no one made it. It's one of the it's one of my favorite figures. If not, you know. There's just something about it because it's so cool. The way they've articulated the arms, they've made it. Per it's just perfect. It's just an amazing figure. And I'm just like, how has that figure never been made? How? Because we don't want to take a risk. I don't know how many units they made, but it was sold out in, in two weeks or so. In Yeah. They're, they're, they are uh, leaving money on the table. They are leaving money on the table, and they're playing 
the safest of safe balls that could ever be safe. Indeed. Uh, Radio Man 10117 uh, with a five dollar says, Hell as and Rob. Thoughts on the three foot tall Galactus from Haslabs, despite Hasbro, I'm probably getting it. Yeah, we had a big discussion about that. Wait a minute, so. is Haslab making a three foot Galactus? <laughs> Stop it. Is that true? Maybe. Oh, Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Uh, Peter Pacheco with a one dollar fifty phallic. What? So. Uh, Alastor's Knight with a twenty dollar super chat. Thank you, sir. Hell, as and Robert, I completely agree with you with your stance on capitalism and fan funded projects. I backed their reprinting of Hero Quest. There we go. There's another. Mm. I was a kid when it first released, but now I get a chance to own a legit copy. I, yeah, absolutely. Which is good. Which is very good. I, I've i got, like, upstairs, I've got an OG box of crossbows and catapults. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I love those things, man. Uh, Luke with a two pound says, "Which Sentinel has uh, the the you know the big bug eyed Sentinels from um, from Marvel?" Uh, David the Batman with a two dollar says, "My drug addiction hates you guys right now." That's a good thing. It is. Uh, Bill Sotheby with a five dollar say, "Hey." Uh, just made it in. By the way, as has anyone told you, you look like a literal bell end in these thumbnails. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, Radio Man 1017 is back again with a five dollar and says, Hey guys, has anyone made a one in six red Reddington? From the blacklist, I think they have. Uh, you know what? I don't, I don't know. I'd get that if they did. Oh, I, 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 I think I. The, I, I, I don't want to. Okay, I don't want to overcommit, but I got a feeling there might be. I uh, oh, love I, that character, and it's James Spader. So double win. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Let's have a look. Sure, maybe. Did I dream it? I don't know. No, it doesn't look like it. I must have. I must have dreamt of a one in six red reading. I, I would love God. one. I would love one. I don't. Know. Um, it could easily get made though. It could. It could easily get made. That's because uh, this is what these third parties do. Yeah, they take. Uh, they take. Um, I don't know if you you know call blacklist cult or whatever. Yeah, it's quite. It's quite a popular show. Um, but they take these popular shows which people like and they do they do make these characters they do by the way speaking of characters are you gonna go does do snake eyes open in the uk this weekend um i checked my local cinema and it wasn't up i gotta check. say it looks really good <laughs> i'm like i never thought i'd be like excited about a snake eyes movie but man you know i i have a a theory that nothing can't be made 25 percent better with the addition of ninjas <laughs> so. um it's not showing as uh no well. black widow space jam and uh you know purge in the heights and that's that's about it oh well Fast nine well interesting they have more um viewing for black widow than they do space jam even though space jam took more than black widow in the box office mm. last week mm. uh, that's just a by the by that's not a slight it's just a you know it's just the catalyst in me it's true uh la, 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 la. jobs mcgee with a five pound says as look at a picture of the inside of the homecoming suit it looks exactly like the suit here it, the, this might just be the far from home suit inside. It could be like Justin. He was. He even said that it might be some kind of mystical overlay. 
or something. Uh, I don't know. We'll don't see. Know. We'll see. Snake Eyes, by the way, is also another tokenized character. Just saying. <laughs> so much for Ray Park. Yeah. God, that he's such a good martial artist. I know. Well, I don't know about other stuff. It's a little bit weird. Never mind. Uh, Shane O'Reilly <laughs> with a one euro fitty. Connoisseur mustache. And uh, Shane O'Reilly with a one euro fitty phallic. Swag. Latino Slant with a five dollar says Leslie is a fantastic talent. Can't wait to see her rocket. I hope the script is as amazing as well. And hola, RMB and as hello. I'm 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 gonna say don't bet the farm on that. <laughs> Maybe a couple of hundred dollars if you got it free, but uh, definitely not the farm. Ray Parker Jr. Yes, <laughs> was on. Uh, Doing the stunts for uh, Star Wars. Uh, Mr. Reborn with a 20 Danish. Don't worry, as it's only Marcus propaganda. Uh, Marcus, Marcus propaganda. Oh, I know. It's 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 just Hollywood going, look how look how amazing they are. Uh, look how inclusive they, they were like, ah, you know. Uh Stubble Book Shave with a 20 Swedish says. Raise the floor instead of lowering the ceiling. Amen. Uh, Man of War 665, Neighbor of the Beast. I thought I'm laughing because I've already read this. Neighbor of the Beast with a $6.65 super chat. As does 40k painting by numbers. Ah, it's so funny. Uh, Athenon with a $50 super chat. Athenon, thank you so much, man. I did a fifty dollars super chat in this the, the bloody super chat catch up stream as well. So, dude, that is insane. Uh, told you I'd be here. Lots of great chat today. Aspiring to be better has for some reason become toxic these days. Yeah, I I agree. It's seen as not the thing to do. Aspiring, you know. Um, Here's one for you, Rob. Sorry, before I carry on with the message. Please. Look, look at the way that they've attacked people who've like lost weight. You know, like uh, <laughs> Adele and stuff like that. And they've, you know, they've they've lost weight. They want a healthier life. I mean, god damn, I wish I had the, you know, the drive that they have and the perseverance that they have because I know I need to make some big efforts. And what do they do? Ah, oh, they're being fat phobic. Ah, oh, they're doing. No, they 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 want to be healthier. They want to be healthier. They want to live longer. You know? Yeah. People you know, because you... we don't want to optimize the bodies we live in. Why should we? Why optimize it when it's 100% vibrant? Do you know what? Do you know what uh, happens when the male body is. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say when a frog gets struck by lightning. Same thing that happens to everyone else. <laughs> nice, Ray! nice X Men reference. I was actually gonna say. I was gonna actually gonna say when the male body is optimized, even at my late age, it means I need less Viagra. Hey, ladies, L ladies. Uh, people seem to want to achieve uh, with our working to get there. People want to achieve, want to achieve with our working. Yeah, people want to achieve through working to get there. Instant fame, instant wealth without the work to get there. They don't want well, to put the effort. Yeah, they, they want the reward, but they don't want the effort. Dude, I've tried to make my OnlyFans account work for so long. I get nothing. <laughs> I get no subscribers. I get no patrons. I get nothing. I'm going to. I'm going to surprise everyone. I'm going to have one open soon. Yeah. It's going, to, it's going to have clown picks. It's just going to have like horrendous stuff. And uh, I'm going to be so rich before the, um, before the, dude, uh... I'll sign up for your OnlyFans. <laughs> as long as I get notified for all your live streams. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, baby. And if you could make them between like 11 uh, p.m. and 3 a.m. my time. I'm all good. Can you do that? Can I get those? Can I get those OnlyFans? Can I get the as OnlyFans streams between 11 
p.m. Pacific time and 3 a.m. Pacific time. That four-hour block of time is the time I have to patronize OnlyFans, and I would love to patronize you. <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? I vanished. Oh, I just thought you were having me talk. No, I, I vanished account. to the stream. Oh, I thought I, I thought you you were giving me the floor. You were one so, so I could say I got a four hour period of time when your OnlyFans account will be my <laughs> bread and my, my raison d'être. You know, I'll use that term again. I mean, you know, from eleven p.m. to three a.m. is my OnlyFans time, and I will devote <laughs> myself to you. Okay, I'm gonna say from eleven p.m. to eleven o three p.m. No, no, no. The four hours. I want you there. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Athenon also says, oh, quite so I can. Uh, as press, I, I can't stop hitting the button, ladies. How you doing? <laughs> Only at a 45 degree upturn um, angle going from 120 yeah. beats per minute down to 60 and back up. You know what I'm saying? Just can't stop hitting it. Uh, yeah. Can't stop hitting it. Fucking, I'm like Robin Hood. Uh, Art Bell with a five Canadian super chat. No message, but thank you, Art Bell. S Beam with a five dollar super chat. I've got paint techniques from Darren Carnell. He's taught me a bunch of painting techniques to get a more lifelike look to a figure. There you go. Hitchhiker 42 with a five pound super chat. Rob. You should do a feature-length documentary on action figures about the history and evolution of them with interviews with the makers. I'll okay. It. It's funny that you say that because I did submit a proposal to do a history of G.I. Joe figures when the first G.I. Joe movie was coming out to Paramount. Uh, it was rejected. And I I do... I What I'd love to do is I want to do a hot toys documentary where I not only talk about the history of hot toys, but I would interview all the celebrities who have had hot toys made of them. And how do they feel about having those figures? Everybody from Adrian Brody, who from predators has a, a hot toys figure, Ben Kingsley, Sir Ben Kingsley, you know, from Trevor. Iron Man three <laughs> Trevor. And then all of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Scarlett Johansson. I mean, imagine how many great actors in Hollywood have had Hot Toys figures made of them. Even Kevin Feige has a Hot Toy figure. And I think with my documentary background, I think I could actually raise the money to do it, but I would need, I would need, uh, I don't think I could do it without, like, say, Disney would block it. But Disney, I mean, Star Wars and Marvel, you'd need to get people on board, and it would be a celebratory documentary. And I mean, even George Lucas has a hot toy of himself. So to imagine what it would be like. And you'd, wouldn't you like to see your favorite celebrity holding up the hot toy of, the, of themselves and, and commenting <laughs> on it? I mean, that's, and if you, if you set down like all of the different Black Widow hot toys in front of Scarlett Johansson, what would she say about them? Well, uh, I think that would be documentary gold. Do, do we have a story about Jeremy Renner and he, uh, yep, you know, he kind of really negotiated for his likeness. And one of the conditions was he got, was it three boxes? Mm -hmm. three, something like three boxes of, of the hot toy. And they were initially like, no, at first he was like, okay, bye. Renner ain't no dummy. No, this guy knows what the uh, 411 is. I mean, if so, he has yeah. all those figures from the first Hawkeye, Hawkeye from Avengers, man, he's going to make, he could put those on the secondary market and do pretty well. I think he's doing all right. He's, yeah, I, think he he's, I, think, I think the kid's doing I'm all just right. Saying, you know, but I mean, <laughs> Jeremy Renner, I'm just saying, assuming he wasn't making the kind of money he makes as an actor in Marvel movies, he could make some money selling those uh, hot toy figures on the secondary market. That's all I'm oh, saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Joachim Stark with a 50 Swedish says, I am good, and those I deserve and <laughs> thinks I deserve a Galactus. Okay. That's okay. Uh, Von Zeech uh, with a $2 says, Continuing the bad habit, ordered a third-party Jill. I've had my eye on it. I've had my eye on, on that. I'm, I'm just not convinced with the outfit. Um, yeah, I, and I think Dam's Toys, we might see a, 
licensed Jill very soon because Dam's Toys have the uh, Resident Evil license, and that that Leon is great. I mean, especially now I've put it on its. Uh, oh my God, what's fallen? On? Oh, it's Scourge's weapon again. Uh, you know, now that I've got Leon on the uh, the umbrella base, this this is this is a hot and sexy toy. This this really is, and this is the body that I need to change. This is the you know patch missing body. Um, so yeah, I I think a Jill. I got a feeling they might do Jill with Cap and you know I I think we, I th think you could be in for a goodie. Uh, Zach Adamson with a ten dollars says Marxism has to destroy the past. Uh, yeah, and then hold its hand out and say, "Where's where's my money? Where's my mama?" Where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? You've done. Oh, God. Where's my money? Where's my money? Um, then we've got the nerd Poreal life form with a $5 says, never got into toys, but I just got a Funko Pop of Khan from Space Seed, black hair, red outfit. I saw that and I was like, I have to have this. There's a, there's a there's a love or hate with with Funko Pops. Yeah, well, a con in a red outfit's pretty damn good. Con, and then finally, uh, but you get what you love, dude. You get what you love. That's right. Uh, Ralph Mack with the two Australians says, "I will never take experiment jabs." Great reset, NWO. Yeah, that's the toy I'm going to get as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And there we go. And that's pretty perfect because that's like boom on the two and a half hour. Well, where we would be if we'd started on time. My God. Uh, so we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Rob, what do you got going on? Good, sir. Well, uh, of course, uh, the, the film that I produced, uh, Tango Shalom, that I produced, edited VFX and post supervised is going to be released limited theatrical in uh, America on september 3rd and it will be on vod on all platforms on october 29th so look Ooh. out for that because if you ever wanted to see an indie jewish spiritual quest family dance comedy fable this is the movie for you yes i do uh you know well then there you go you can watch it's called tango shalom it stars the delicious karina smirnoff who was on 20 seasons of dancing with the stars uh that's coming up but you can also find me on my own YouTube channel, The Burnett Work. And, of course, find me on Instagram and like everything. And, I, by the way, I have to say, everybody who goes to my Instagram account and goes back like two or three years and likes every action figure post I've put, or I love that. God bless you. <laughs> so find me on Instagram at Robert Meyer Burnett and go back and like everything I've ever posted because I do love that. And uh, Or find me on Twitter at Burnett RM and let's have some kind of crazy ideological argument about something let's make it really incendiary and drive the twitterverse crazy oh my god that sounds so hot i know right i know uh massive thank you to everyone who turned out today i really do appreciate that a huge thank you to my mods my beautiful beautiful mods for doing your modding uh <laughs> Everyone who hit the join button down below became a member. Thank you so much indeed. Everyone who hit the super chat button and supported the channel, thank you so much indeed. And we'll be back. Uh, I'll be back uh, Friday for Friday Night Tights over on Gary's channel. Sunday Subnautica mm. uh, will be here. And then next week, we're over to Robert's channel on wednesday for fully articulated and i'm hoping maybe mm -hmm. i will debut a video of the observatory as it exists now i've never done that and uh yeah that's i'm telling you i i want to go down on the observatory Ladies. even though even though i stay i'm inside it all the time <laughs> What that Ladies. means, I don't even know what to say. You know this what? I'm a cunning linguist. It's terrible. Anyway. Uh, so you take care, folks. Have a lovely rest of your Wednesday evening or wherever you are. You take care. Bye for now. <laughs>